the love in the air. There's so much turmoil, so much hate, so much offensive, hateful speech going around. It's hard to believe that this is 2023 and that we are trying in many aspects to work together to find communities of love and happiness so that our lives can be better, not only for us, but for our kids and other relatives and friends, our co-workers. I think we all want kind of the same thing. Some people just don't know how to reach their goal. I'm just going to say a little bit about something I was listening to today, and it was some of the political pundits talking about what would happen if Donald Trump were found guilty of election fraud through the case that has been um, put against him in Georgia. But yet, what if Donald Trump actually went on and won and became president again of the United States? What would happen to that case in Georgia and what would happen if he were found guilty of RICO conspiracy and election fraud in the Georgia case? Very interesting. Well, many of the people said that because he would now be president, he would be able to push back through federal laws and the fact that he had a duty to carry out the federal um, mandates and he had uh, to worry about many things, both in this country and internationally, that he would be able to push back the Georgia case and pretty much ignore it. And he might be held that he would face the Georgia case once his term in office as president was over. So that's one thought. The other was there would be a legal fight, the feds against the states. The feds, because they're more powerful, would win over the state and the state case would be minimized and Trump would pretty much have reign to do whatever he wanted to do. Including make the life of all the people in Georgia who push this case against them, he could make their lives hell through elected officials, Republicans who are in the state of Georgia just retaliating against people who push this RICO case and federal election fraud case forward through the courts. So I thought about it and I said, you know, I, I don't agree with those feelings. I don't agree that that case would be minimized. I don't agree that Trump would be able to go on as usual and pretty much ignore the case until he's finished his term in office, at which time he'd be well into his 80s and everything would be much more poo-pooed because he would have done two terms. People would have said, why are we still pushing his election fraud case? And through public pressure, it would just kind of disintegrate. But I didn't think that was right. I didn't think that was what would happen. And I'm going to express my feeling on what I think would happen if Trump is found guilty in the Georgia RICO um, criminal organizational conspiracy case and the uh, Georgia election fraud case. If he's found guilty and by chance he is elected president, I think everything would stop. 
You have to remember, becoming president is based upon having fair, free elections. Everybody who's a citizen is able to vote. And whatever the rules are for voting, when the voting occurs, those are the rules. And we don't get to go in behind the election, change the rules, veto or uh, cancel votes from citizens. In Donald case, Donald Trump's case, he was vetoing 11,780 votes that were against him in order to make himself president in 2020, every second of a second term. So that was totally unlawful. And that's the basis of how we run our elections. You can't poo-poo that in a presidential election. That can never become minimal. That always has to become maximum. If you are going to do fraud to make yourself president, then the whole presidency just goes up for, well, who can do the fraud the best? Who can get those machines and doctoral? Who can uh, threaten election officials better? Who can threaten secretaries of state, election officials, governors, and so forth better in order to get the result they want? And that's what you'd end up with because once you okay it for one person, well, then the race is on for others to say, this is a path. It's like rats. You know, once one rat finds a hole, all the rats start fi going toward the hole. So these rats would all go through the hole and get themselves, quote unquote, elected. That is, fraudulently get themselves into governmental offices to do whatever criminal acts they wanted to do in the future. And you wouldn't be able to stop it because it would have been okayed in the past. That's why our laws are so special and have to be adhered to because they all go unprecedented. Well, you go into the court and they say, well, judge, in such and such a case in uh, Georgia versus Trump, they found that it was okay for him to go and call the Secretary of State, bully the Secretary of State, told, tell the Secretary of State uh, people don't like him, tell the Secretary of State he's not going to be reelected, tell the Secretary of State the President isn't going to support you in reelection, tell the Secretary of State people think he's dumb, tell the Secretary of State um, that he's not doing a good job and that he, the Secretary of State, is committing uh, criminal activities that he will be prosecuted by the federal government if he doesn't follow what the um, Trump and his co-conspirators want him to do. They said that, and you'd go into case, and you would repeat this over and over again and, and say, this is precedent, and they found this was okay, and so uh, we can do that. We can pressure people. We can threaten them. We can call them names. We can call them, you know, anything to embarrass them, to harass them, uh, you know, whatever we want to do. So I don't think that the, the Georgia case would be minimized. I think it would call a halt, and it would go back onto the president, and the president has an oath that he takes when he is sworn into office, that he has to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. Well, you would go and you would say that he has not protected and defended the Constitution, that he has gone against the Constitution, he has violated his presidential oath, and therefore he needs to be thrown immediately out of office. Now, of course, our system is slow, so slow that would probably take 20 years for someone to do all of the steps 
that would be required. But it would have to be done quickly because once somebody violates the oath of office, they should not be hanging around, you know, still going to the desk, still getting in the office, still having the keys to everything, still being able to throw spaghetti against the uh, walls of the office and all kinds of stuff. They need to be immediately stopped and confronted with the ruling of Georgia that he violated uh, election protections for citizens. Everyone has a right to vote. One vote for one person. One person does not get 11,781 votes. That extra vote would be Trump's own vote. So, and then, having seen that he violated his oath of office, I think he would have to be removed from office and his vice presidential pick would have to take over. Unless his vice presidential pick was one of the named co-conspirators of the Georgia case who was also found guilty of election fraud, a RICO, a criminal organization, conspiracy to overthrow the government and so forth. If that person was there, then of course it would march down um, the line of succession. But I don't think they would be able to minimize a guilty ruling from the Georgia court. I think that would immediately go into the federal government and maybe they couldn't arrest him that day because the federal government would be protecting him with, of course, the army and the secret service. But they could certainly file immediately that he has violated his oath of office, that he did it fraudulently because he knew that he had already gone in and violated um, the sanctity of elections and then they would remove him from office and put in the vice president. Now I think people need to think about that process because they're going to fumble around and you know the Senate's going to want to take over and if their Senate is run by Republicans they're going to say ah who cares you know keep him in office and or if the House doesn't want to um, stand up and they're also ruled by people backing Trump they'll say ah who cares and then he'll stay in office so it has to be some sort of way that people can have go through this this process that's not through politics but through uh the legality of standing by the oath of office and if you have been found to violate your oath that you should be removed so they should start thinking about that now because it takes our government about two, three years to figure out how to make the next move and to really get um, started having a hold on somebody. So that's my opinion on what would happen if Georgia found him guilty of the RICO criminal cons organizational conspiracy and election fraud and intimidation. But Trump was put back in office by voters for a second term. So what do you think would happen? I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts and I hope you continue to have a wonderful day. I'll be thinking about you. I'll be praying for you and the people in Maui. Uh, what a terrible terrible decision they have to make about so many things uh, after that tragic historic fire and their many losses and take care
Be safe. Like and subscribe. Bye.